How are you? Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that I have never been, and never probably will be, the most academically astute of people. If I was to go for a job as a spear maker, and the only other person who turned up was a blind man with no arms, I would lose the job to him due to the fact that I am so unqualified for absolutely fuck all. That being said, even I could not prevent the inevitable outcome, which would be that I would be sat here doused in piss because I had just been reading Kent Hovind's doctoral dissertation from Patriot University. I assume it was Patriot University, either that or it was founded by a guy called Pat Riot. I think everyone should do a bit, because even me, I'm going to get people saying, oh, you, you to take the piss, you've got, you know, you're not a doctor, fucking right, I'm not. They might use the old, oh, he's too intelligent for you. No. And I'm going to show it to you, I'm going to give you a brief overview of this dissertation. And this is dissertation for a doctor of philosophy in Christian education. You, you don't have to go any further than the first fucking line. The, the first line. He, he hands it to you on a plate. This is the first line in the introduction to Kent Hovind's doc doctoral dissertation, right? Hello, my name is Kent Hovind. Who starts a fucking doctoral dissertation with, hello, my name's Kent Hovind. Hello? He what the f My name is Kent That's how a primary school student writes about his summer on the first day back at school. I live in Pensacola, Florida. I have been a high school science teacher since 1972. What, really, really? You've been a high school science teacher since 19... Have you noticed he never, qual he never qualifies what high school he worked at? I find that interesting. Also, I could be a fucking high school science teacher, I mean, okay, I couldn't, I'm not qualified, but you could put these in the job, they don't know fuck all. As an evangelist, God has given me the opportunity to, pr no, having a fucking mouth has given you the opportunity to preach the wonderful story of his marvellous creation over 400 times, 400 times each year, that's more than one time a day. It is my burning desire to help Christians get back to a simple faith in God's Word. What is God's Word? Oh, just one. Just one. Right. Satan's method has always been to instill doubt in God's Word. Isn't he a bugger? Right. Right. The first sentence that came from Satan that is reco recorded. The first sentence that came from Satan that is recorded for us in the Bible going, Ye hath God said? He started by questioning God, God's word in the Garden of Eden. It worked there, so he used it ever since. Well, that's the scientific method, isn't it, Kent? You do some, if, if, if you do something and it creates consistent results, you keep doing it. Do you know what's not fucking scientific? Doing the same shit over and over again. That, as Einstein put it, I believe, is mental. In the 20th century, in the 20th century, the major attack Satan has launched has been against the first 11 chapters of Genesis. Just the first 11. It's a, in the 20th century, he's only got to the first 11 chapters. Right? I believe that the Bible is the infallible, inerrant, inspired, perfect word of God. Those words all mean the same thing. I believe the Bible needs to be read and believed as it stands. Well, duh. Christians are often guilty of neglecting or twisting the Bible to fit their lifestyle or preconceived ideas. No, it's called moving with the times, okay? Or evolution. In this, I'll be covering, in a nutshell, a nutshell, a nutshell that is 102 pissing pages long, right? I'll try to answer questions that modern science has raised from, scriptural view, from a scriptural viewpoint. Well, there's no point asking, answering the questions from a scriptural viewpoint that's called bias. I am, without apology, sorry, but I'm not going to apologise for this, a Bible-believing Christian, just in case you hadn't worked that out yet. I have been saved for 22 years. You can't be saved for 22 years. You're saved once, and then you don't get into any more fucking trouble, right? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Ugh. 
I will be quick to point out that there is nothing new under the sun. Really got out a fucking iPod, didn't they? Yeah. Most of my ideas are the result of the input of hundreds of godly men and women through the years. The input. Mm -hmm. Is that like the input you're getting in prison, Kent? Now, the history of evolution. Where in the world did the idea come from that, the, that things left to themselves can improve with time? I don't know, Kent. Who would start such a crazy idea like that? Nobody. This idea is the opposite of everything that we observe in the world today. So you're saying that things don't improve over time. Some design, that, isn't it? For instance, all the highways in our nation today, left to themselves, decay, deteriorate and fall apart. Yeah, inanimate objects are not going to improve over time, Ken, if left to the inanimate objects. Sentient beings are a completely different kettle of fish. The first and second laws of thermodynamics. What do you think he's going to do with them? There is no scientific evidence, none at all, to back up any form of macroevolution. None whatsoever. None. Zero. The technical, definition, the technical definition of evolution means change. That's more like a sort of watered-down version. There is no question that things do change, so evolution happens then. You've just said it. You said the technical definition of evolution is change, and that change happens. The cities we lived in have evolved. The cities kept, what are they? They're made of concrete. When I speak of evolution, I'm not referring to small minor changes, because that buggers up my fucking case. These small minor population shifts brought about by environment are referred to as microevolution. Yeah. I would like to trace the history of evolution beginning with the fall of Satan from heaven through the last 6,000 years to modern day evolution and explain what they do. I can't go on anymore with it. But there's so much crap in this. Do a video on it. If you're watching this, everyone get this and do that. This is the fucking biggest pile of hamsters smeg that I have ever had ever I, it's, I've been reading it since last night it's genius if it was satire it would be genius thank you for giving us this joy this could be the the, the life and times of Ben and Fang X Richard the Dick Coffin 666 good night may God bless